There's one thing that most of us will agree on. Diets don't work. Learning how to eat properly for the rest of your life does. And the honest truth is that most of us have never actually learned how to do that. And it's pretty sad considering the fact that we consume food ever since the moment we're born until the last moments on this planet. This is another reason why most people believe diets are the all-in-one solution to all their weight problems, which we know is not true. And in this video, I'm going to share with you something different. I'm going to share with you five rare healthy eating habits that will not only help you get lean, but also stay lean. And these are the exact same habits that are part of my plan as I been between 10 and 15 percent body fat for over eight years now and these have worked really well so if you're currently feeling frustrated you're not losing weight or maybe you do lose some weight but then you end up regaining it these habits will be a game changer for you so starting off with habit number one which is practicing purposeful eating let me ask you this have you ever stopped and asked yourself why am i eating right now the answer might surprise you because if we only ate when we're hungry, the equation of getting lean would be pretty straightforward. You would just eat a very filling, healthy meal, lots of protein, lots of vegetables, drink a tall glass of water, you would be full and you just move on with your life. But the thing is, we eat for a lot of reasons that have nothing to do with hunger. Could be stress eating, could be emotional eating, could be boredom eating. And the problem is the more we move away from eating for hunger, to eating to satisfy that emotional need, the higher the likelihood it is that we're going to overeat. So my challenge to you is that next time you're about to grab something, ask yourself, why am I eating right now? Am I really hungry or am I looking for a state change? Because if you're looking for a state change, there are other ways you can accomplish that that don't involve having more calories. An example of that would be taking a walk, uh, watching a movie, watching an episode of one of your favorite shows, hitting the like button on all my videos, calling a friend, could be reading a book, could be watching one of your favorite documentaries. All those are great options to change your state that don't involve having more food. Because we live busy lives, there's a lot of responsibilities, there's a lot of stress, and if we were to eat every single time, we want to feel a little bit better, well, then we're going to quickly overeat on calories and we're going to be in trouble. Now, speaking of calories, habit number two that I want you to implement is choosing foods based on ROI. Same as an investor would pick a stock based on the potential for the highest return on investment, we can use the same strategy with our food choices. Too many times we end up spending our calories on foods that we don't even enjoy as much. For example, if you mindlessly eat while multitasking, you're not even aware of the full taste and smell and enjoyment of the food and you're just adding more calories. It could be snacking just because the food is there and it's convenient for you, but you don't even like those snacks. Could be getting a dessert in a restaurant while you don't even like any of the dessert options, but you just feel obligated to get that dessert. All of those are poor food investment choices. My personal rule is that if a food is not a clear hell yeah in terms of either enjoyment or health, then it's a clear no. What we're doing here essentially is applying the Pareto principle. 20% of our favorite foods bring us 80% of our overall enjoyment. So by focusing to invest our calories in those 20% on occasion to indulge and enjoy, we're then automatically removing all those calories that would go for foods that we don't really enjoy and we're not getting much out of it. And we're also being smart investors because we're actually making the diet a lot more flexible so we're not cutting out all the things that are our favorite. So you don't feel as restricted as you would normally be if you would take the approach like the most people would take it, which is removing everything that they ever like and they don't really know how to budget their calories. Now, speaking of calories, weekends and eating out, this brings me to the third habit, which is getting into a routine of creating eating templates. What I mean by this is, let's say your weekends are trouble. You're good Monday to Friday, but then on the weekends, the plan goes out the window, or you don't have a plan to begin with, you end up overeating, and you destroy a lot of the efforts you've just done throughout the week. Well, this is a perfect opportunity to practice creating templates for those weekends. How would you do this is you would think in the future, let's say you have a Saturday dinner coming up or Friday dinner coming up, and then you would pre-plan that dinner with specific food choices, how many calories you need, how many drinks you're gonna have, and then you pre-budget and allocate that beforehand, and then you automatically now adjust the rest of the day to match 
to be in your budget because one of the worst situations to be in is actually go through the day, eat as normal, and then you end up having 400 calories left for dinner and then dinner is out, which is 1200, 1400, 1500 calories at least, depending if you have drinks or not, it could be even more. So by being smart about it, you create a template for that particular day, for that particular restaurant, and then anytime in the future you're running the same place or a similar place, you know exactly what to order and you know exactly how to stay on track. I personally have templates for sushi, for Mediterranean places, for Italian places, for Middle Eastern places, for steakhouses, and I know that I just have to run that exact template when that weekend dinner comes up and I'm good to go. I don't have to overthink it as much, it keeps it very, very simple for me and I can easily stay on track. Because I understand that the goal of the restaurant isn't to get me shredded. Their goal is to make the food as tasty as possible. And I understand that the world is not gonna adapt to me, I have to adapt to the world. So instead of ending up with 300 calories for that dinner, I'm gonna pre-plan everything and I'm gonna enjoy that dinner knowing that it actually fits into the overall budget and everything is gonna work out really well. Now, speaking of staying on track, this brings me to habit number four, which is thinking about getting lean and your process to doing so from the second and third order of consequences. Our bodies are very complex systems with a lot of feedback loops. A diet change doesn't just have a single effect. It has secondary and tertiary effects that most people never think about. So let's say, for example, you just overate on the weekend. You fall off track and you feel really, really bad about that. You wanna get back on track as soon as possible. Well, now most people are gonna cut calories a little bit more, add a bit of cardio, maybe do some fasting just to catch up quicker. And the first order of consequence there is positive. You will catch up quicker by reducing calories, of course, but the second order of consequence now is that you've made the whole process a lot more difficult. And if the version one easier version of that is hard to stick with, how are you gonna stick with the second version of it? Now you're even more likely to fall off track again, and which is the now third order of consequence. If you do fall off track again, now you actually have to compensate for even more, and it's gonna be even more and more difficult, and this is where discouragement comes in, you're falling off track, you don't like the process, and you just end up quitting. And this is actually how most people fall off track and end up in that negative spiral, because they're not thinking about those few steps into the future. They're just thinking one step at a time. So if you're making that adjustments, you wanna be very, very careful what you're compromising consistency for getting a little bit faster performance to get into the goal. Because at the end of the day, you might be better off by ex just extending the diet for a week rather than making the diet more difficult and ending up falling off track again. So you always wanna be thinking multiple steps into the future because at the end of the day, it's really all about consistency and the best diet, quote unquote, is the one that you can stick with. What brings me to habit number five, which is leveraging something called inverting. And this is a habit that I picked up from Charlie Munger, the legend billionaire investor. And in order to explain this concept, let's imagine, ask you a question. How do you stick to your diet consistently? That's a very tough question to answer because there's so many factors, human psychology is so complicated and we're not all the same. But what if I ask you the invert of that? How do you ruin a diet? could probably come up with at least a dozen reasons of why diets fail or why your particular diet failed. Maybe it's overindulging on the weekends, not planning enough, you're having a too aggressive caloric deficit, you don't eat enough protein, you're not drinking enough water, you're not eating enough vegetables, you're hungry all the time because you're spending your calories on random protein bars and snacks that don't fill you up as much. So you could easily come with a bunch of reasons. And actually, inverting is the perfect diagnostic tool that you can use to identify the exact things that you need to fix to be more consistent with your diet. Because being successful on this journey isn't just about adding more and these clever strategies and things like that. It's about identifying what's causing friction. Where are you falling off track? What's ruining your specific diet? And then when you fix those, you will automatically be more consistent. And this is really what I want for you. I wanna make sure that you can simplify, focus on the fundamentals, remove the obstacles, so you can ultimately reach your goals. What's gonna help with that is making sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notifications also by hitting the bell icon details for coaching are in the description below if you want to work with me. I'm also going to leave a video here at the end where I cover more healthy eating habits. So check out that video and I'm going to see you right there.